Hello, my name is Lucio, and welcome to the show. A while back, I finished Child of God by Cormac McCarthy. Cormac McCarthy is one of my favorite writers. He writes about dark themes, such as in Sutri, there are some elements of darkness, as well as his most dark novel, aside from Child of God, Blood Meridian, which is an epic tale of the Glanton gang in the mid-1800s who scalp Indians, and by Indians I mean Native Americans. There is also The Road, which is not entirely bleak, but it is depressing to some, and if they don't have a glass half full view of the world, then they will see it as hopeless. But there is hope in the novel, as it is said from the man to the child to carry the fire within us, which means to carry the hope of the world within humanity and itself in order for it to continue and prosper, even in difficult times. In this novel, it is about Lesser Ballard, and I will read the blurb on the back. Falsely accused of rape, Lester Ballard, a violent, dispossessed man who haunts the hill country of East Tennessee, is released from jail and allowed to roam at will, preying on the population with his strange lust. His everyday actions are transformed into stunning scenes of the comic and the grotesque, and the story hurls towards its unforgettable conclusion. McCarthy depicts the most Sorted aspects of life with dignity, humor, and characteristic lyrical brilliance. So the novel concerns itself with questions of morality and evil. What makes sorry? What makes something evil? What? Is, how can we define evil? Is evil by nurture or by nature? What do we do in the when we confront evil, do we succumb to its grasp, or do we overcome evil in a Nietzschean sense? I'll read some excerpts from the book, which goes as follows on page 4. To watch these things issuing from the otherwise mute pastoral morning is a man at the barn door. He is small, unclean, unshaven. He moves in the dry chaff among the dust and the slats of sunlight with a constrained truculence. Saxon and Celtic bloods, a child of God, much like yourself, perhaps. So if you're wondering where the name comes from, it comes from that passage. I will also read an examples of beautiful prose that McCarthy delivers in every novel. In the front was a porch and more weeds. From the road a quarter mile off, travelers could see the great shake roof and the chimney. Nothing more. Ballard trampled a, path, trampled a path through the weeds of the back door. A hornet nest hung from the corner of the porch and he knocked it down. The hornets came out one by one and flew away. Ballard went inside and with a piece of cardboard swept the floor. He swept up the old newspapers and he swept out the dried dung of foxes and possums and he swept out bits of brick colored mud falling from the board ceiling with their black husk of palpe. He closed the window. The one painting left tilted soundlessly from the dry sash and fell into his hands. He set it on the sill. In the hearth lay a pile of bricks and mortar clay, half an iron fire dog. He threw the bricks out and swept up the clay, and on his hands and shine bones craned his neck to see up the chimney. In the patch of roomy, roomy light a spider hung, a rank order of earth and old wood smoke. He watered newspapers and set them in the earth and lit them. They burned slowly, small flames sputtered and ate their way along the rims and edges. The papers blackened and curled and shivered and the spider 
descended by a third and came to rest, clutching himself on the Asdi for the earth. This is what I mean by beautiful prose. There is beauty in the darkness and you can find some meaning in dark tales such as say the Gulag Archipelago which I tried reading a hundred pages of but couldn't muster the strength of watching or reading all of the sin and depravity of man. But when encountering dark tales it is important to look for the light and be reminded that the world is both good and evil, not merely one or the other. Well, on page 25, I will show you another example of prose. Going up a track of a road through the prairie road woods where all about lay enormous blocks and tablets of stone, whether gray and grown with deep green moss, toppled monoliths among the trees and vines like traces of old of an older race of man. This rainy summer day he passed a dark lake of sun and jade where the moss walls rose sheer and plum and a small bird and slat, sat slant upon a guy wire in the void. If you are interested in something dark and brave, or un trying to understand evil in a literature sense, then this is the novel for you. McCarthy doesn't use punctuation, minus the occasional comma and the rarity of a semicolon. He doesn't use quotes. Sometimes the character speaks within a paragraph, which is sometimes confusing, but if you are paying attention, then it's not confusing at all and he holds nothing back, especially, especially with his language, and he attributes the language of his time and culture in which the characters live. Thank you, and have a good night.